Hello everybody, I'm Ivana, tutor of Croatian language and in this video I will show you the most efficient way to learn grammatical cases in Croatian language, which you can also apply to similar languages such as Serbian or Bosnian. So in this video we will make first just a quick review of each uh, of some cases and then you will get the answer why you should actually learn grammatical cases because if you ever wonder, um, can I actually not use them but use a basic form, will people understand me? So you will get the answer uh, to this question. And then I will show you the most efficient way to learn grammatical cases. I won't tell you the easiest way, since maybe for someone it isn't the easiest way, because this method requires a lot of practice. But I will give you exact examples that will make, that will make your uh, learning process both, both effective and as easy as possible. Okay, so we can start uh, firstly with a um, short review of seven cases. As you know, Croatian has seven cases. Uh, nominative, genitive, dative, accusative, vocative, locative and instrumental. So nominative is a basic form, a form that you can find in the dictionaries and it's a subject in a sentence. Genitive is a form of noun that answers to questions of who or what. For example, in English it is a friend of my mother. And you see, possession is expressed by prepositions, by preposition of, but in Croatian there's no such preposition, but possession is expressed by suffix of a non mother and it's called genitive. So, prijateljica moje majke. This suffix e, e refers to possession. Uh, actually, there is a sort of preposition of and you will often hear it from people, but it's not correct when it comes to official language, but people use it in their non-formal conversations. It's uh, od, for example, prijateljica od moje majke, but as I said, it's not correct in official language. So if you're preparing for some exam, a1, A2, B1 and subject like this, it's important to consider this preposition is uh, not allowed when it comes to expressing the possession. It is correct when you talk about uh, material, for example, majca od vune, a shirt made of wool, but you can also say it just like in English, woolen shirt, uh, vune na majca. But let's go back to genitive. So it's the only example when genitive comes with no prepositions. Mm, in other situations it comes with prepositions. Od, do, is, is, meču, nasuprot, protiv. Od and do is from and to, for example, from 7 to 18 o'clock. Then uh, is, is from, like I'm from Croatian. Ja sam iz Hrvatske. Između is between, nasuprot across the and protiv is against. Uh, the third case is called dative. It doesn't come with any prepositions and it answers to questions to who, to what. For example, I'm giving it to my sister. Daim to sestri. Or um, I say to my sister. Or I say to my sister, uh, rekao sam sestri. So instead of preposition, there is a suffix in the end of a noun. Then there is accusative. It also doesn't come with any prepositions, except for a few of them in some specific contexts. These are u cross po. You will see later um, u which means in. This preposition is um, not only for accusative but also for locative. But there is uh, the rule when to use u in with accusative and when with locative. All about this later. 
So accusative is an object in a sentence, so it's a long with nominative, it's one of the most used cases. And then we have vocative. It's not so usual case in other languages as you know. But what is vocative? It's actually when you call someone or start, start to talk to uh, a person. Uh, so you start like um, listen mother. This known mother is in vocative and in Croatian it sounds maiko, while basic form is maika. Mm, but this case is less and less used in Croatian. It should be used, so uh, if you want to pass an exam, <laughs> don't neglect it. But just for conversational needs, you, you shouldn't uh, give much attention to this case. Um, because it's used only for um, the most common nouns, uh, and they are um, Maiko, mother, sine, a son, a prijatelu, a friend, ministre, minister, and you can also hear on TV news the journalists refer to uh, a president like predsjedniče, uh, recite nam, Mr. President, tell us, and so on. So, vocative should be used also for personal names and for other nouns. For personal names, for example, I'm Ivana, so people, when when they start to talk to me, they should say, uh, reci mi Ivano, tell me Ivana, but nobody really say it. The name always stays the same, like reci mi Ivana. Only for names like Ivan or Josip, um, and it's locative. Uh, so uh, Ivan and Josip, these are the most common Croatian masculine names. For these names, people um, usually use vocative, so Ivane and Josipe. But as I said, vocative is not much used, so it's enough for you now to remember only these um, most common examples. And the next one is locative, it's actually the same form as dative but with prepositions u, in, uh, na, on, o, about, po and prema. You will see later the examples with these prepositions. And the last one is instrumental. It refers to company or method or travel source. So we will see uh, exact examples later. So. Uh, you will get a better view in instrumental. Okay, and now the question is why you should learn grammatical cases and why we should use grammatical cases while speak Croatian. Uh, so, as you could see on the example of dative, on an example, I said my sister. So, literal translation to Croatian would be Reko sam sestra. Reko sam sestra. So you see, you use basic form sestra, but not sestri. But then there might occur a misunderstanding because if you say reko sam sestra, people might um, understand you that you say it sister, like you just start to talk to your sister. But when you use um, dative, and you use suffix e, reko sam sestri, everybody will know that you have talked to your sister and said her something. So that's why it's important, it's, it's crucial to use grammatical cases in Croatian language, because uh, if you only use basic forms, there might occur a lot of misunderstandings. Okay, so um, so now what to do? How to learn all these forms? Um, as you could see, there are three genders and seven cases. So it's overall 21 suffixes you, uh, you need to memorize. And it's just singular. It's just singular. Consider that you need to memorize also 21 suffixes for plural. So the conclusion is 
no way you can remember them all. <laughs> maybe you can, maybe, maybe someone with a good memory and good motivation succeed to memorize all of these forms. Um, but if you do it, you still probably won't be able to to apply it, to apply this um, these rules, to apply these suffixes in conversation. So when it comes time to use, for example, um, um, accusative masculine noun, so you will be like, ah, wait, uh, now I need to a suffix a or no, 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 no suffix. For this time, maybe someone who speaks um, with you will be on the other side of the street. So we need to apply it more efficient method. And now I will show you how to learn uh, what method to use. So I will show you on the example of genitive. Here I've listed all the examples with nouns in genitive. And now your task is to repeat them every day or every second day or at least twice a week as often as possible. But don't memorize them to be able to repeat them with no view on the script. There's no sense for memorizing this way, but you should repeat the, the samples aloud like you are making a conversation. So repeat these examples and try to make your own variations. This way you will be involved in the process instead of just repeating. For example, this example, this first example is uh, Ona je prijateljica moje prijateljice. Say it aloud and after that say a few variations like Ona je Prijateljica moje prijateljice. Dakle, ona je moja prijateljica također. She is a friend of my friend, so she is my friend too, for example. Or another uh, possible variation. Uh, ona je dobra prijateljica moje prijateljice. She is a good friend of my uh, friend. Or changing the words. This is the final step. Ona uh, je... Mm, sestra moje prijateljice uh, uh, or ona je sestra moje susjede she is sister of my neighbor but a woman neighbor and now this way what happens as you speak as you repeat these examples your brain memorizes these patterns and then when you will want to uh, say something using also genitive and feminine known, uh, you won't even think about the rule, about the suffixes, but you will instantly know that you need to say a word uh, in feminine gender that ends with A, E, okay? This is for uh, feminine uh, known, so um, when it comes to masculine nouns, you will instantly know that you need to apply letter A in the end because you will repeat the examples a lot of times so they will enter your brain which will result in automatic speech. So this is the point. Instead of just memorizing and then um, thinking about it, we work on your um, automatic, automatic memory on your um, instinct knowledge. So uh, when you will want to say, for example, uh, I'm walking to the school, you will say "hodam do škole," but you won't say "školi" or "školu." Why? Because it will sound so unnatural for you. So you will know instantly that you need to say hodam do škole. So uh, this is the point and we work, we uh, will work on this. So uh, as much as you repeat this, all of these examples, I will give you now for all seven cases. Uh, one day you will speak automatically. So and this is 
uh, this is the most efficient way for grammatical cases to stay in your memory, to stay in your brain, okay? So now I will give you examples uh, for uh, all sound cases and for all uh, genders, uh, actually for feminine and masculine, um, because neutral gender now, the gender uh, should be considered also, but uh, I didn't include it because it's um, the first reason is that uh, there are a lot of uh, exceptions in neutral gender, but the main reason is that uh, suffixes for neutral genders are actually the same as for masculine gender. So here are all the samples of genitive in a sentence that you could use. The first examples in uh, is when uh, there's no preposition and other samples are preposition plus genitive. You can stop this video and transcript the samples in your notebook or PC or if you want you can contact me and I will send you this PowerPoint with all these samples. So um, the same is with dative that uh, I have put in the same group with locative. Why? Because as we said, locative is actually the same form as dative, but only with prepositions. Uh, that's the only difference. So if you know suffixes for dative, you know them also for locative. So here I mentioned the first example is uh, for dative when you don't use preposition and other examples are with prepositions uh, for locative. Actually, uh, I would just explain you here the example with preposition uh, u. You will see that u is also mentioned as example of accusative. What's the difference when using u as position? For example, I'm here, I'm in the library, in a cafe. You are in the in a some position, and then it comes locative. But when you are speaking about direction, you need accusative. For example, I'm going to the library, item u knižnicu, and this is accusative. You see, it's the same like I'm going to Italy, item u Italiu or item u Brazil. So there, uh, there's one important thing to consider when using accusative masculine noun with no preposition, uh, like in the example I see a man or I see a traffic lights. A man is in creation człowiek and traffic lights is semaphore and it's singular unlike in English where it's plural. So about, um, about this Mm, nouns are in singular masculine gender and need you need to put them is in accusative but as you can notice they don't have the same form forms why because a man signifies a being a human and traffic lights are an object but remember that it's the rule only for masculine gender in accusative Feminine nouns change in comparison with basic form, okay? And uh, here are examples uh, for the last case, instrumental. I mentioned all possible samples. Firstly, with the most common preposition um, with instrumental, it's with s. Then sample with no preposition and uh, it happens when you express a medium. For example, I eat uh, with a fork. Um, in English, it's used with as for a company, but in Croatian, with is only for company, but not for a medium or for method. Or vehicle, like in the last examples, putuem autom, busom, vlakom, tramvajem, just known in instrumental. 
Uh, here we will also hear many times from random people yet them se vilicom, putem se autom, but that's not correct. That's uh, one more incorrect form that has established in everyday language of Croats, but in official language this is considered false. And that's it. I hope that you will find this learning method useful for you. And now it's all up to you, as often you practice. Uh, the main problem my students used to share with me that they would like to practice, but they are never sure that they practice correctly, that they are using correct forms. So now the problem is solved. You have all possibles, uh, all possible examples, um, so you can practice being sure that you practice correctly. I didn't include plural because they, uh, there would um, be too much examples in the beginning, but if you want me to share uh, um, the examples for plural with you too, so just write me in the comments below and I will share it with you in the next video. No problem. So stay tuned, subscribe, like and so on. Uh, I wish you a great day or night. So uh, see you in the next video. Vidimo se!